I have sinned in my past. Welcome once again. In this session, we're going to be reading 1 John chapter 1, and we're going to deal with that verse that is so misunderstood by so many Christians. Let's start with verse 1. John said, That which was from the beginning, that which we have heard, that which we have seen with our eyes, that which we saw and our hands touched concerning the word of life. And the life was revealed, and we have seen and testify and declare to you the life, the eternal life, which was with the Father and was revealed to us. Now, what's he talking about here? He's talking about Jesus. Verse 3, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. Two things about this. Now, John here identifies himself as someone who has both seen and heard, first-hand witness of the Lord. Some people claim that none of the books of the New Testament were written by first-hand witnesses. Here we have John. And don't forget, Peter too identified himself as a first-hand witness. Eyewitnesses of his majesty. Number two, compare this, or even Peter's letter for that matter, with the letters from the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul never claimed to be an eyewitness of the Lord. Yes, he had a vision, but he can't claim what, what John claimed here. He never claimed to have physically seen the Lord or physically touched the Lord. That means that the testimony of John or Peter has much more weight, has much more authority than the testimony or the writings of the Apostle Paul. If they were brought before court, the letters of Paul would be all but thrown out because Paul wasn't even a witness. Continuing with 1 John chapter 1, verse 3, the last half of verse 3. Yes, and our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And we write these things to you that our joy may be fulfilled. This is the message which we have heard from Him and announced to you that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. Now when John talks about light and darkness here, He's talking about righteousness and sin. God is righteous. In him there is no sin. There is no darkness. Verse 6, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in the darkness, in other words, we sin, we lie and don't tell the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. What does it mean to walk in the light? It means to walk in the Word of God. It means to walk in obedience. What does it mean to have darkness in you? It means to have sin in you, because sin is darkness. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. How does that happen? Is it just some magical thing that happens where the blood of Jesus covers our sin? No. Remember, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, not throws a rug over it. And how does the blood of Jesus Christ take away our sin or cleanse us from our sin? Because the blood of Jesus Christ speaks of his crucifixion, his death. And we are supposed to identify with that. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me in the life I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. In other words, I died with Jesus. Romans chapter 6, how can you who are dead to sin live in it any longer? So the blood of Jesus Christ speaks of the death of Jesus Christ, which speaks of the death of ourselves, which means that we are dead. We are dead to sin. Dead men don't sin. And because we don't sin anymore, God doesn't count that against us. God doesn't count our past against us. Ezekiel chapter 18 makes that clear. That's how repentance works. It doesn't matter what you did in the past, whether good or bad. If you've changed, then the past is not counted against you or for you. The only thing that God looks at is your present state. If you used to be wicked, but now you're not wicked anymore. If you used to sin, but you don't sin anymore, then God forgives you of that wickedness. He forgives you of that sin. That's how it works. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us by giving us the power to stop sinning. 
because we can look upon his crucifixion and say, I am crucified with him. I'm a dead man. I am dead to sin. First John chapter one, verse eight. Now this is the verse that a lot of people completely misunderstand. John says here, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. In context here, John is talking about saying you have no sin in your past. We know that because in chapter three, John said, if you sin, you are of the devil. We we'll look at this again, verse eight. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. I've seen this happen so many times where people use this verse to justify their sin. Saying, well, I sin, you sin, everybody sin. If you say you don't have sin, you're a liar because you deceive yourself and the truth is not in you. Because it says in John chapter one, verse eight, if you say you have no sin, you deceive yourself and the truth is not in you. But once again, in context, is talking about having no sin in your past. Remember, Jesus said, go and sin no more. That means repent. That means change. And again, once you've changed, God forgives the sin in your past. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, in other words, bring our sins to the light, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us the sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I want to emphasize again here, it says cleanse, not throw a rug over, not wink at, not turn a blind eye to, but cleanse, meaning completely clean it up. And yes, God is powerful enough to break that bondage off your life, to set you free from the sin you're enslaved to. He's not only able, but he is willing. You just need to know the truth and the truth will set you free. And the truth is you are crucified with Christ. That sin died on the cross nearly 2000 years ago. And when Jesus rose from the dead, you rose with him in newness of life, born again, the old completely gone. Verse 10. John said, if we say that we haven't sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Now notice in verse eight, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. That concept is nearly identical with verse 10. If we say that we haven't sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So John is merely repeating the concept here. And in order to understand verse eight properly, you really should look at it like this. If we say that we have not sinned, we have deceived ourselves and the truth is not in us. 1 John 1 verse 8 is not to be used to justify present sin. John made it very clear. If you sin, you are of the devil. And as always, seek God with all your heart. And if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.